You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. In November of 1957, a small committee was formed. By February 17, 1958, they held the first public meeting of the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. That same year, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament asked the artist Gerald Holtam to create a symbol for the movement. The CND has been at the forefront of the peace movement in the UK, and it claims to be Europe's biggest single-issue peace campaign. Holtam's design, though, has become one of the most widely recognized symbols on the planet. I'm talking, of course, of the peace sign. I feel like who art ed? Who art ed? Mr. Wood, art ed me. Either way, it, it's a big, it works on so many levels. I know. I thought the great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and for this week's Fun Fact Friday, we're looking at the peace sign. Of course, there is more than one peace sign that exists. There's the hand gesture comprised of the thumb holding down the ring finger and pinky as the index and middle fingers are splayed to form a V. In some bit of irony, that hand gesture started on the battlefields of World War II. Allied soldiers held up the gesture signaling V for victory, and sometime later, anti-war protesters adopted the gesture as a peace sign. The universal symbol developed by Gerald Holtam, though, is the other peace sign, the one consisting of a circle with a vertical line down the center and two diagonal lines forming an inverted V shape, going from the center of the vertical line down to the bottom portion of the circle. Interestingly, there have been occasional crazy conspiracy theories suggesting the peace sign is a satanic symbol. Those people argue the central lines represent an upside-down cross that is falling apart. I've personally always found that theory kind of funny because it seems to me that a move to destroy the device used to kill Jesus would not be the strongest representation of evil. The peace symbol, though, does not represent a cross, inverted, deconstructed, or otherwise. Holtam did actually consider putting a cross in the peace symbol. He ultimately decided against it, though, because the symbol of the cross, it's a loaded symbol. It not only connects to one religious tradition that not everybody ascribes to, but also because the history of religious conflict, such as the Crusades. He wanted something more universal, open to everybody, and he opted to base his design on flag semaphores. The word semaphore comes from the Greek sema, meaning sign or signal, and phoros, meaning bearer. A person holding flags at various angles could be used to send signals. This form of semaphore was particularly popular in ships in the 19th century and can still be used today for emergency signaling. Gerald Holtam made line drawings representing the flag semaphores of N and D for nuclear disarmament, then put them into a circle to represent the globe, and because let's face it, the roundness just looks nice. It frames the design while keeping it looking soft, no pointy corners. Of course, good symbols are simple and yet loaded with ideas to get their point across. The early drafts of the peace symbol had the lines flare out as they met the circle. This was because Holtam said part of his inspiration came from a line drawing representing his despair. He thought of a figure standing with arms outstretched. He compared it to Goya's painting of a peasant standing before a firing squad, although in Goya's work, the peasant's hands are up, and in Holtam's line drawing, the arms are down. The line flares out at the ends where the figure's head, hands, and feet would be. If that weren't dark enough, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament first distributed clay badges with the symbol and a note explaining, quote, In the event of a nuclear war, these fired pottery badges would be among the few human artifacts to survive the nuclear inferno. While the entire world has not disarmed, there have been international agreements to curb the proliferation of nuclear weapons. As we look at the symbol 
as with any piece of abstract art, what we see is largely dependent on what we're looking for and what we bring to it. While Haltom talked of his despair at the prospect of nuclear war, I see hope in his plea for peace, which has been echoed by people around the world. Governments act when their citizens demand it, because strength does not come from weapons. Clinging to weapons is a coward's imitation of courage, just as rudeness is the weak person's imitation of strength. This last year or so, I have seen my audience growing quite steadily, and that's in large part because of kind people who take the time to leave a rating or review, as well as some larger organizations like the Art Explorer Foundation, which was kind enough to include me in their media library. I'd like to try to pay it forward. And so, on my Fun Fact mini episodes, I've added a segment to endorse and shout out a podcast that I like and that I listen to. This week, I'm talking about Your Brain on Facts. I absolutely love this show. Moxie does a fantastic job of weaving together tons of relatively obscure facts and making it feel like a story unfolding. I appreciate the humor she brings to each episode, and her voice is so soothing, I could listen to it all day. I'm glad I was late to discover this show, because it gives me plenty of back episodes that I can go through on my daily commute. Especially on a bad day, when I don't want to listen to the news, I love hearing Moxie talk about surprising facts about the origins of different foods. It's the kind of information you never knew you always needed in your life. Of course, you can find Your Brain on Facts on all the major podcast apps. And while you're there, please make sure you leave a rating review for Moxie and maybe head over to my show page and leave a rating or review for Who Arted and help other people discover a podcast that's somewhat okay some of the time, dare I say, occasionally bordering on goodish. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and of course on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.